Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, Mike and Jamie are back for episode number 63 of Mirrorless Minutes. And uh, well, we've got some cool stuff to talk about tonight. I know Mike <laughs> is really excited to talk. If you kind of take a little peek over his shoulder, uh, yeah, he's going to be talking about it. what he's got sitting back there. And, and I um, should, should have had it go. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I tell you what, if you've got good health insurance, go for it. <laughs> Um, so, you know, Mike's got uh, a drone sitting back there, and it does fall under the category of mirrorless because it's not a DSLR hooked to the bottom of that thing, right? It, it is not. No, <laughs> not that I can tell. In fact, I got that sitting next to it so we could. Yeah, see a little it. size it's not, it's not hooked up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's about the same size. I turned yeah. it on so it would flash and stuff for a little bit. There you go. Yeah, a little light show. <laughs> My lights aren't quite as exciting. They just sit there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's let's lead off the show with that, Mike. Let's talk, about, let's talk about your new toy. Oh, man. All right. So this is one of those things where you look at it for, I don't know how long you look at it, too long, I think. Um, but, uh, you know, I've, I've been wanting to get, get into this drone thing probably because of you. So I'll just blame you. It's easier. That's what I tell my wife. Sorry, Denise. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I just told. That's what I told Denise. It's Jamie's fault. He has one. I got to get one. Um, but, uh, is it, but I really needed to get one. The biggest thing is, is the travel piece. Cause I knew that, that the one you have, in fact, on your left there, I yeah. think that's your left. Yep. Uh, I see that that would be really tough. Yeah. To a few day trip I mean, to California. Um, but when this one came out, the, the Mavic, the Mavic pro so small, okay. I mean, this is crazy small. Um, just, just nuts. This is folded up obviously. And, I mean, if you look at this and that's the 12 to 100 on the, you know, it's about the same size right there. That's incredible. So, so now I can take that 12 to 100 and put it in the bag and right next to it, I'm dropping this thing in, uh, taking a couple batteries and, and I'm good to go. Wild. That's you know? wild. And, and it is, it is crazy, um, doing this. So, so yeah, I've been looking at it, uh, for, I don't know how long I've been looking at it, but I actually went in and finally purchased it. And now all I've done is watch videos <laughs> of everybody that know how to do this. And this is a whole nother world. I mean, whoever does this, uh, uh, I mean, I, I give a lot of people credit because I'm not a pilot. I really had, had no desire to be a pilot. <laughs> yeah. Although I fl flew 93,000 miles last year, not one of them was in the front. Yeah. <laughs> they were all in the back. I'm positive. Uh, so learning how to fly the camera piece is not that bad. I can pick that stuff up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, pretty well, but boy, learning to fly and worried that you don't want to crash your new thousand dollar toy. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a little, it's a little different, you know? Um, so it, it was fun. You know, I've been out uh, yesterday is so about 40 minutes and, uh, so flown three times or whatever, but it, it's, it's different. Um, I got to get out with people like you and, and others that have been doing it for a while to get yeah. some little bit of inside tip, I think. So here's a question. Um, and I know yeah. I saw this question asked on your, uh, your Facebook uh -huh. timeline earlier today. Cause I went and watched the video that you posted. Um, yeah. so are you in this, the drone thing primarily for video or stills or both? Well, Very yeah, that's sure. it was a good question a lot asked me. Yeah, it was a really good <laughs> and, question. And I and I thought at first I was in it for more about um the photos cuz yeah. just to be able to get at a different angle. Yeah. But now after I'm playing with it a little bit, I'm going, "Man, this video is pretty cool." <laughs> so, and 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 your stuff is always that you've done with yours is really, you know, it's pretty cool. When you get up there, you start thinking, "Ah, the photos are nice, but man, that video up there, you really could do some sharp things. So I, I'm going to force myself and get out of my comfort zone completely and, yep. and go for it. Um, I know I've, I shot a bunch of photos yesterday and I got to process them, but it, it feels normal to me. Okay. I sure. shot a bunch and you're going to, you know, process them and that. Um, but, uh, but I, I know one of the things that I think is, is sharp, the way this thing does with a different app, and I might have talked about this app, this Litchi or whatever. Mm -hmm. Do you, ha you didn't have that one? Yeah, I had it for a while. Yeah. For a while. Yeah. I know yeah. there's a panorama piece in there right. that it does yeah, all the shots for that. you. Yeah. Yeah. And I saw a couple of guys here do like Belle Isle and that, those huge panoramas. And I'm wondering, 
you know, boy, do they like move that stick every time 25% over and it just <laughs> does it for you. It goes all yeah. the way around up and down. So I'm, I'm excited to want to try something like that from a photo standpoint It's getting something that I never could really get unless you're on a boat. Right. No, I purchased that, that app because it was going to allow me to do things with my phantom that right. supposedly that my phantom couldn't do. Um, like a point of interest, you know, so if my microphone is right. in my house, I could set that as my point of interest. I can move out, we'll say 50 feet, angle yep, my camera 45 degrees, and then pan around. Well, yeah. so I purchased the Litchi app, and then DJI just makes it available in, in, the, uh, in the updated app for my drone. So I purchased the Litchi app for no reason. And I know you and I talked earlier about it. Yeah. Um, I never flew with that app because it just feels a little weird to me that a company that doesn't make drones is making a piece of software and it's a just uh, just the name kind of weirds me out a little bit i don't know why you know it's just it almost sounds like <laughs> isn't that weird that i felt the same way yeah it's like some hokey you know yeah foreign manufactured uh -huh. app you know is gonna fly my you know thousand dollar toy yeah. around it's like yeah no i'll just stick with the manufacturer's app and and it's yeah. been great DJI app anyways. Yeah, and I, I think so too. I mean, I see that one thing with the panoramas. I like that, but uh, you yeah. know, for the expense and then everybody that gets it says, you better know what you're doing first. Right. You know, and with the panorama feature, um, yeah. you don't, you don't, you wouldn't have to move it 25% every time. You can have yeah. a lot of overlap and just use the, yeah, the photo merge too. in Photoshop and just do it that yeah, way. As long as it so. picks it up. Yeah, yeah, because because I I'd be just like shooting a panorama that we would normally do now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You Except know? without doing some weird software hack to make it happen. Right. So. To make it happen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. Um, I definitely see us. Uh, I'm bringing this thing to Ch out of Chicago. I know that. Yeah. So I know oh, that yeah. that, night, that night that we're out <laughs> at at the planetarium, I can yeah. pull it out at least and get a shot of the skyline. See now you you flew yours you know I think your very first time flying it you flew it at night didn't you? Yeah, I flew it at night, which is a little weird. Yeah, I've, ne <laughs> I've never flown mine like in the dark, so I'm kind of curious um, what the footage looks like. You know what you can do with it when it yeah, does the, start to get dark. Um, the picture looked a lot better that I took. Yeah, um, the well, footage because it ran up. I had it on uh, auto, okay, so it auto. ran all the way up to 3200 sure. ISO and just everything was grain dark oh, yeah. grain yeah. um but i think if i went into manual but the other thing I, i've got a whole nother idea now i was thinking about because this has lights on it when you're not taking you're, pictures you want a live composite with it i want a live composite yeah of of this going down my neighborhood flying through the curve in front of my house yep it's you funny know. you mentioned that i've got <laughs> kind of the same thing going i've got electroluminescent yeah. wire that we used for halloween costumes for my kids and yeah. um i wanted to dang i've got eight strips of it that are four foot long each and they don't they they weigh nothing they literally almost right. weigh nothing and i wanted to dangle them from both sides of the landing oh, gear and then fly around with that and make like a four foot tall curtain of light like going through the park or wrapping around the bar yeah. or whatever i just haven't done it yet i just i kind of want to do this idea. with a group of people right so, okay so there's our stuff. thing yeah because yeah. right. we're talking about we got to get together on this so <laughs> we'll be flying drones at night with lights <laughs> dangling from them There's nothing weird about that you know yeah. well, <laughs> at that least that not like us. i was just gonna say that sounds like the mirrorless minutes guys <laughs> that was goofy. We'll i'll explain that one to the cops i guess <laughs> you know and it's yeah. funny too you know you mentioned that um that you came into this your initial thought was you know photos i'm gonna take photos with this yeah. thing i came into it from the whole other end my thought mm -hmm. was man i can't wait to shoot some video from you know up high or just a smooth right. flowing video and then lately all i can think about is i want to get up and just point straight down and start taking photos from a perspective that people don't get to see and stuff but like that so it's weird how like how it changed like that and i'll, mm -hmm. I'll share a photo tonight like that just kind of set that in motion for me but oh that's fun. cool you're gonna have a lot of yeah fun. yeah you know and it's it, it it takes you out of your comfort zone i think in the end it's it'll end up helping my actually oh, my yeah. photographer because you're just I learning agree. more and mm -hmm. what's wrong with learning more when it you know when it gets down to that so but uh 
Yeah. So, so well, that was exciting, but you've got something pretty exciting too. <laughs> you've, 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 we both had a lot of crap happen lately. Um, Feels like you were it. you were on a huge interview. I mean, you got to tell them. Well, I mean, I guess you can't tell them about the whole interview, but <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah. it was completely from out of the blue. Um, yeah. I got an email from Iberian X Perillo who runs uh, the Candid Frame podcast. And if you're not familiar with the Candid Frame, um, I think you should go check it out. Uh, he's on iTunes and the Google Play Store, oh. and um, he's done hundreds of interviews with photographers. And uh, the interviews are always great because, you know, while he, there's obviously discussion about photography because he is interviewing photographers, mm -hmm. a lot of it, though, is just kind of a I get to know who the photographer is. You know, it's right. easy to go find a photographer online and see their work, you know, and kind of get a feel for, you know, what they shoot. But it's really interesting to to hear an interview with somebody and not just focus 100 percent on their photography necessarily, but just kind of focus on them. You know, what's their story, you know, and I think right. if you get to know the story about a person, it kind of makes it easier to understand why they shoot what they shoot maybe you know or you mm -hmm. can kind of see where the personality transitions into some of their work um right so um i very next reached out to me and asked me if i wanted to do an interview and i thought holy crap you know <laughs> where did this come from <laughs> like yeah this, this guy was because that's a, isn't that uh podcast running i'm pretty sure he's been going longer than Derek's story and Derek's story was 10 years yes yes uh, I mean, it is and his crazy. voice man he's got such a great radio he voice he does have a radio oh voice God. there is no doubt and he yeah. is the consummate interviewer yeah. um, i was really uncomfortable uh, <laughs> the thought of being on the other side of the interview i love to ask people right. questions i like to get to know people and i think that mm -hmm. obviously he's the same way you know i think uh right and i think that's what made him such an easy person to be interviewed by um mm -hmm. It was just it was just great the whole experience was awesome i'm not sure when the podcast will go live um yeah but what was really exciting is that you know he seemed to know about the show a fair amount you know and <laughs> questions to ask about the show and and spoke very highly of you and and of um just our rapport with one another and, right. and our show you know he's really impressed with how long we've been going and how dedicated we are to this and he likes our format you know that we're not uh, stodgy 100% technical <laughs> driven you know we're just two guys right. who really love to shoot and and like to talk about the mm -hmm. experience of shooting and, and, sh and sharing our photos and it was funny he was talking about how much pressure it must be to always have some photos to share every time we do a <laughs> show you know because it, every once in a while it gets oh, to be like that you know, gets, I told yeah. Him, yeah, you know yeah, it does a little spoiler on the interview and i told him that one of us might have it a little bit easier because they get to travel a little more than yeah. the other one but but it was a uh, it was yeah. a really cool well, that's experience, true you know? but even <laughs> even these last this last two months where i wasn't traveling it is it was tough i mean i was like struggling like oh crap i gotta shoot something this week so i have for the show next week yeah yeah that's me down in the dining room doing water drops on the dining right. room table you know <laughs> oh crap i gotta get some photos in but um yeah but it was, it was well, a really I think, cool experience. Uh, yeah, I think March I'll take care of that. I, I'm home eight days in March, so <laughs> really, yeah, both shows in March wow. I will be from the road for me. They're both. Ooh. Can we talk so, about that a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Did you oh. have answers on that? <laughs> yeah, I do. And okay. I, just, I just realized something. Dang it! So we can't talk about it. Okay, that's okay. There, I, well, we'll talk about it now. I'm just going to put it out there now. There's going to be a delay. <laughs> on okay. the show that should be the eighth so we okay. might have to bump it a day early if you can do it a day early i um, could probably do it either way i'll be in a okay. hotel i think <laughs> yeah i'll be in a hotel on the eighth <laughs> i just found out oh, today really? i'll be in okay. chicago that week so um oh cool yeah surprise you know All new right. job new, new uh new yeah. opportunities to travel i guess so mm -hmm. well I'm, eighth, i should probably write that, maybe write that down <laughs> yeah oh, I'll, re I'll remind you definitely yeah. but here here's the thing so um, uh -huh. and i'll just i'll put it out there now um that show that would have been on the 8th and it's probably going to be on the 7th now mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have Ann day on and uh and day if you're not familiar with her just go to the olympus don't you don't have to go to the olympus website to find her on the visionary trailblazer section google and day mm -hmm. and day is an incredible photographer who has had an incredible career in photography that is yeah. still going um and she is the coolest character ever she's so fun to be around <laughs> and such a fun person to just talk to uh so it'll be a fun show without a doubt um yeah 
the kind of person Anna is, you know, she's she's been with diplomats, she's been present during, you know, the craziest of yeah. political events, you know, as yeah, countries. I mean, yeah. all, way, all over the place, yeah. multiple elections, you know. Yeah, you know, so yeah. she's that person, but at the same time, she's the person who thinks that it's funny that we refer to ourselves mm -hmm. as like the Wayne's world show. And she right. says, do I get to be <laughs> Abraham Lincoln? So she's right. got a wonderful <laughs> sense of humor. And, uh, and like I said, a very storied career. So look yeah. forward to, to Anne coming on the next. If there's anybody I would say to, um, that if you wanted to have a blast to hang out with, I mean, everybody in the visionary team is great, yeah. but Anne is just the one that I didn't, did not see as with the way she was going to be. No. She's hilarious. Yeah. You didn't <laughs> I, see it coming. She's, I she's mean, a, the, the week that we spend with her, cause that's all, all unfortunate. It's the only time we really get during the year. Yeah. Um, I mean, sometimes my jaw just hurts from laughing. So hard. she's yeah. such a, she's got such a great sense of humor and, and just sees things. Hey, this is the way I see him this way. I'm going to say it. Yep. Yeah. She's a, she's a blast. Yeah. Yeah. You, I think anybody, and then to hear, um, and talked at, um, at the visionary the Envision. summit yeah in vision summit about her film photography and and you know and about you know what was the thing is film dead yeah, was it the, the name of it yeah, or the, whatever the topic was um film versus digital and oh, Anne, of course, digital. Yeah. and Anne has years of experience shooting film mm -hmm. but she was on the panel on the side of digital you know talking about how she is right. grateful for the transition to digital mm -hmm. versus the other people on the panel who were pro yeah. film it was really right. Cool. It was really cool because you got to see some of her, some of her work from yes. even some of the film days and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, I can't wait to 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 be able to talk to her. That'll be really cool. Yeah, she's a treat without a doubt. All right. Um, so oh, you know what? Yeah. So I I never remember to do this, and I just remember just now. So let okay. me do this real quick. So I always forget to bring up the YouTube channel while we're doing the show, and I always yeah. miss that. Um that people can ask questions live and I, and, mm -hmm. and I forget about it till it's too late, but I just did it now. And I see that we've got a couple of questions. Oh, wow. Um, and uh, so Robert panic, Bob, yeah. Bob. wants to know if I'm going to discuss my storm chasing strategy tonight, because we have a good yes. opportunity for some. I really had it down as a question to ask you. Did you really? <laughs> yes. It's written right here. <laughs> so <laughs> are you and Bob on the same wavelength? No, I but don't know. it's funny. My wife asked me, yeah. So, so is, is Jamie um, Jamie going to chase storms. <laughs> yes, he is. Um, so here's the deal. Uh, Michigan is Michigan doesn't know what Michigan's doing this year. Michigan's right. drunk. It needs to go home and realize it's winter. Um, <laughs> but so we've got a chance for some pretty hairy weather tomorrow. It sounds like it could mm -hmm. be windy. It could be a lot of hail. It could be the slight chance of tornadoes maybe. Um, but regardless, uh, Bob says there's no collaboration between you at all. Thank you, Bob. No. Um, <laughs> so basically my strategy is this still have the day job. Uh, Fridays are a short day, so at least I get out at four instead of five. But during the day, I'll be monitoring the radar and just kind of uh, working out a game plan from then. Uh, what I'll probably end up doing is at about quarter to four, I'm going to check the radar and look where everything is headed. And hopefully there's something intense moving within, I'm going to say, a 80 to 100 mile radius of where I'm working. And then I'm just going to hit the road. So that might be northern indiana it might be northern ohio it might be western michigan i'm not sure but that's my plan yeah. bob my plan is i have no plan until quarter to four and at that point i'll put a post out on facebook and twitter saying hey this if you guys want to meet up on the road this is where i'm headed um facebook message me or whatever and we can all meet up but i know i've got a small group of people who are already saying hey you know i'm gonna go with you if you want you know if you want company so i've got like three or four people already that want to go so that's cool. So I'm looking at the temperature tomorrow. Again, yeah. we'll we'll mark the time. So it's February 24th in Michigan. It's going to be 62 here. That's what it says tomorrow for the high. 62. 62. That just doesn't even make sense. No, you know um, that two days ago, next week it'll be 30. It is yeah. next week. 30 and snow. A couple That's days next week. Almost where it should be. Right. I think I think it was on the 19th. So I guess it would have been like four days ago. It's when um, I was in Las Vegas. So four days ago, a year ago, four days ago. Oh, oh a year ago. It was okay. 19 below zero. Four days ago here, I think oh, it I was almost that. 60 degrees. I remember that. So welcome to mirrorless weather. 
But anyway, yes, <laughs> exactly. So, so well, what else do you do besides looking at radar? I mean, what like what did you pack? Let's put it that way. What what do you <sighs> brilliant? You know, this is photography. I should <laughs> talk about more than just my radar apps, right? Right. So the gear selection: EM1 Mark II with a grip, um, of course, mm -hmm. Vanguard Veo tripod. Um, so I'm going to be packing this bag back here. I'm going to do a shameless plug for Vanguard since how <laughs> I shoot for them now. This is the Alta Sky 49 backpack. It'll hold Ooh, that's big. basically a small child if I needed to <laughs> get into child smuggling, whatever. Um, <laughs> so I'm probably going to get in trouble for saying this. Or you said, it I looks guess. like it'll hold your drone. Yes, that's actually what it's made to do. Um, yeah. But anyway, so EM1 Mark II with battery grip, uh, uh -huh. EM1 Mark I with a grip, just because I like the way they weigh out when I've got a bigger lens because I'm going to be bringing the 12 to 100, which is not huge, but right. I will be bringing the 40 to 150 with the teleconverter on it. And I'll be bringing the 7 to 14 and 8 millimeter fisheye. So it's really not a lot of lenses. You know, I'm going to go from 8 millimeters to 210 millimeters because of the, the teleconverter on it. Right. All within just a couple of lenses. But no 300 or... No. Uh, there's I probably nothing really you'd want to even grab out to. I think the no. fisheye is the thing that might look cool. Yeah, definitely. Fisheye, uh, yeah, fisheye and 7 to 14 are mm -hmm. good. Um, I could almost probably get away with just um, just the 7 to 14 and 12 to 100 or skip the 7 to 14 and just do 8 millimeter and 12 to 100. Yeah. But I'm not really sure exactly how I'll do that. But it's yeah. definitely going to be the two EM1s, just uh, an all pro lenses because they're weather sealed. Right. Yeah. You got to go out all weather sealed and and that whole thing. So, and then you'll just, you, you just drive into the heart of it. You're hoping, right? Yeah. Well, actually what I like to do is I like to stay out ahead of it or stay behind it. So depending mm -hmm. on how it's tracking and my timing, if I can be ahead of it as it's coming in, although to be honest with you, uh, being on that time of day, because sunsets in the West right. and everything generally here is going to be heading from West to East. If I can stay ahead of it, as the light gets low, I'm going to get a better look for all my shots. Yeah. From behind uh, it. If it's morning, then I want to be behind it, you know, as the sun is mm -hmm. still lower in the sky, but a lot of it's just going to be playing it by ear, depending on what the foreground looks like too, because to me, foreground right. is going to matter as much as what the sky does. Now, does that tripod you're going to use, does that fit on the side of that bag or anything or? Yeah. So, so on this bag, on yeah. this bag, I can actually run it down here because I'm not going to be using the drone. There's a pouch back behind this flap. This flap is designed to wrap around over the top of a phantom. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. Yeah. So I can't even see my camera because I've got YouTube up in front of it. So, oh, yeah. Okay. So this will wrap right over the phantom, you know, with the, the prop sticking out right there. Yeah. But since I'm not going to be bringing a drone, I don't think. Although it would be kind of yeah. cool. To get some, to it would be, yeah. Although you may never see it again. <laughs> right. Um. So if I were to undo these and open it up, which mm -hmm. of course nothing ever works how you want it to when you're live, right? Right. So then I've got. Oh, I see. Okay. Tuck everything down here, strap it in nice. up there. But um, I can fit in this bag though. I could definitely fit the EM1 Mark One with the grip with the 12 to 100 attached, um, the 40 to 150, the 7 to 14. Mm -hmm. And the eight millimeter fish, I still have a lot of room left over in that bag. Wow. wow um, I actually crazy. wore it this past weekend um, hiking. I was hiking for mm -hmm. about three hours and I didn't have the 40 to 150. I had the 300 in there. Oh, and okay. That whole setup and super comfortable. So pretty stoked on these bags. Yeah, it looks really padded. I mean, I remember seeing that in the pictures and stuff. It yeah. Really it's, it's a lot different than what I was used to with the, um, my previous bag that would have been of roughly that size was the um, right. Think Tank Photo Shapeshifter, which is a great bag. Um, yeah. Just a lot less um, robust as far as protection goes. Yeah. I mean, I honestly feel like if I had that on and tripped and fell backward, well, I don't know who falls backwards, but let's just say yeah. I did. If I fell backwards onto my back, I don't think my camera gear would be hurt at all. And I don't think right. I would either because the, the dividers right. in, in there the shape are really... shifter, there isn't that padding because that's almost like the um, perception pro. Right. Same thing. It's not really padded that much at the front. Right. Because your yep. lenses are fitting in those pouches. Exactly. Where, yeah. where those, that's probably all sealed. Dividers. Yeah, yeah yep. dividers. Yep. So completely so, different kind of bag, but, you know, it's pretty cool. I like that it can carry my drone. Uh, Mark Miller, yeah. which I'm going to have to have him on the show probably yeah. after 
And uh, Mark is also part of uh, Vanguard's pro team and right. uh, a big Olympus shooter as well, who's a Michigan guy. Uh, Mark and a drone in, shooter now, and too. And a drone shooter because he's got himself a Phantom <laughs> 4. And he spent some time right. on uh, Marco Island in Florida recently. And he has the bag that is one size up from that one. Um, which actually allows the drone to go inside the bag if he wanted. He traveled that way on the plane. Um, the drone mm -hmm. inside the bag with camera wow. gear as well. So I can't even imagine how nice. big that bag is. It's a giant. Yeah. But. So maybe we'll have him on and talk about that bag. Yeah, that um, no, that would be good. Yeah, talk about him, his photography and all that. That would be great. And uh, I'm sure we can bring up drones too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this week in drones. Oh, wait, no, shoot, I said this weekend. Oh, my God, yeah. I'm going to get sued by Leo Laporte. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, we have another question to uh, Pat Durr. Well, it's not a question. He made a statement, which yeah. is not just a statement. It's what I'm going to call a, a helpful reminder. Thank you, Pat. Uh, Pat <laughs> said that everybody needs to take a shot every time we say Whistler, which uh, <laughs> nobody said Whistler. And in all honesty, no, I probably would have forgotten. Shame on Jamie. Um, no, you wouldn't have, though. I got it right here. Our memo. Right. <laughs> He's got this stuff organized. Your questions so, are on the back of the memo. <laughs> so because my mouth has been running nonstop, why don't you tell everybody what we're yeah, talking so, about? Well, and don't be uh, upset that I'm not going to go to you because you're the guy that's been there. I mean, so take your drink because you really need to talk about this. But okay. anyways, Olympus is, uh, and you've, I know you've seen us put it out there because both of us have uh, railed it out on Facebook and places, and uh, I know Alex put a bunch out today too. Yeah. But it's called Olympus Capture the Action, this social contest. So you have until, and I'm looking the dates here. What are the dates? October during World and Ski Festival. Oh, that's that's when it is, right? Right, April yeah. 13th. Okay, yep. so they're they really want action shots. I mean, yeah. any kind of action shots. Look at the rules, but get these in, and then you can win it uh, all paid three-day trip to whistler british columbia and that's for you and a person another person right yeah if i, I so. remember right that two people so so jamie would like to say if you are going and you win give him a call yeah, you're gonna have <laughs> a heck of a time um so tell us about your experience there because you were there not last year but the year before yes two years ago i went uh with olympus there and it was part of a press experiential um, mm -hmm. One of the cool things that Olympus likes to do when they've got new gear coming out is they like to bring the press along on an adventure, you know, right. to check out the new gear. And they had me along to kind of hang out with the press and, you know, work with them on any questions they might have about the gear. And it was in Whistler during the World Ski and Snowboard Festival. Um, and Olympus is, if I'm not mistaken, one of the premier sponsors of the World yeah. Ski and Snowboard Festival. And they always did a... Uh, it was a 72 hour shootout or showdown. Yeah, it was for a, movies, a, yeah, right? it was for video. It was all for video work, you know, mm -hmm. because Olympus has been really putting in a lot of work and uh, showing off the video capabilities and their cameras. But I can tell you this much from my experience in Whistler, and I can pretty much guarantee it'll be this way for the winner. It is astounding. Olympus treats you so good uh, and they make it so fun. You who know, I can't even imagine what you'll be doing with them. I know when I went, and I'm not saying that this is what you will do, right? I'm telling you what my experience was with the press. We went uh zip lining at Superfly zip lines in uh in Whistler. So just Google Superfly zip lines because some of the tallest, longest, fastest zip mm -hmm. lines in probably most of the world they literally go from mountainside to mountainside in a couple of spots it's just and this is snow just so if anybody oh, doesn't this is know in the winter time. Is. yeah so yeah, april in the snow. mountains means snow so we literally on our first zip line which seriously went from one mountain face to another mountain face and i don't remember the length but it was three quarters of a mile or something it was crazy long uh as we were going across a snow squall starts moving through so it's snowing oh, on us as we're going across it was intense and it was so fun though oh, we did that gosh. we went uh atv riding up in the mountains yeah. uh we went on the u.s or the u.s <laughs> the, <laughs> you're in canada it's not u.s mm -hmm. we went on the uh the olympic bobsled course oh uh, wow. that's right i remember seeing those pictures yeah i mean so th they've sure. got just all kinds of stuff to do you know they're there are a lot of cool locations to shoot uh, in and around Whistler. Uh, just even taking the uh, 
the tram or one of the gondolas up, you know, to to either Whistler or Blackcomb, the the two big peaks there, uh, just to shoot is is gorgeous. Yeah, you got some nice shots just from the top of that. I mean, you're because you're basically you're in the clouds. I mean, oh, good grief, yeah, definitely. Right? I mean, and I'm not sure the elevation at Whistler, but you know, you're probably mm -hmm. in the twelve thousand foot range somewhere on there, twelve maybe thirteen. Mm -hmm. I know it's pretty tall there. Um, so yeah, you'll have fun. They take so, good care yeah. of you. So if Enter. you haven't seen it, yeah, if you haven't seen it, you can go to either one of our Facebook pages for sure. Um, just go to the Olympus or get the Get Olympus on uh, Facebook. It's yeah. right there. Um, get learn the rules. Get get your pictures in. I mean, it would be so awesome to see somebody from uh, Mir Mirrorless Minutes. You know, one of the people that watch. Oh, it crap. would make my day, man. <laughs> it really would. You know, yeah. uh, and not just Whistler. Not I mean, Whistler is incredible, but. Uh, so you fly into Vancouver and the highway that you take is called the sea to sky highway. And it's literally, you start off at sea level and work your way up wow. to Whistler and uh, beautiful waterfalls along the way. Uh, it's just gorgeous. The whole area is just mm -hmm. astoundingly beautiful. I, I'm a, I love the mountains. So it's, yeah. it's, it speaks to me, but uh, again, like Mike said, enter the contest, you know, you never know. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if you win and you're a mirrorless minutes watcher, you better let us know. We want to know. Yeah. <laughs> we want to celebrate with you. Believe yeah. me. You're, well, if you win and you're mirrorless, we're having you on the show no matter what. <laughs> we're having you, you on no before and after. And after. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and you'll get to pick. You'll get to share pictures. Yeah, without hope, without a doubt, it'll just be you sharing pictures, not us. <laughs> right. Um, exactly. So I was. I still want to do the photo share. Um, yeah. But I want to hear. You told me about a battery charger that charges three batteries in an hour. So, dude, yeah. you got me like thinking, <laughs> dang it, I got to buy a different charger now because I three? Know. Which three? Yeah. Not not for the EM1 Mark II. Oh, no. In fact, I, I probably should have made that better. See, I yes, got all drone. It's, it's for drone. <laughs> oh, you jerk. <laughs> No, but we need one. We need that company. I, I've been looking for that company that makes that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They, they haven't made one yet. We we need to get uh, some people on that. To get on them. But anyways, real quickly, drone batteries. Okay. Take, how long does your drone battery take? It takes a while. It takes long to, enough to where I plug it in and I just leave. When I come back later on that right, day, it's hours. So, so this thing here with three things. It, it did three batteries in just under an hour what? um all at the same time and that's Dude. the whole thing like on the one that you get from them yeah that you you can put four batteries on it, it does one finishes it does the next move to the it, next it does them like sequentially yeah. Yeah, it doesn't right. That's what you get from that's, DJI. Wow, what are they you smoking? Know, thought, well, that's that that's not gonna work unless you're unless you just want to stop for the day. All right, so I'm glad you can that you have the link for that because I need to go check yeah. it out see if they make one for they mine. do. Oh. They they make them for the Phantom. Uh Damn it's, you, Mike. go on I know, go on uh uh Amazon and look for them. Um it's not the same exact company, but it's the same exact thing. It's somebody yeah. else is making them for the Phantom. This one's okay. for the Mavic. But mm -hmm. it it takes off. It sounds like um the original Xbox ones. Oh, it's got fans like in it. The fans in it, it like it like really gets going. I mean cool. I actually was nervous about just like I read a lot of reviews. It's got great reviews, but I mean this thing it takes off. It sounds <laughs> I at an hour I wanted to make sure everything was okay. Because right, yeah. those batteries and those things are can be a little scary. Yeah, I mean, they can uh burn up and stuff. They're not like a camera battery. No, yeah. For a EM one or whatever. So yeah. Okay, so yeah, so I'm sorry. I wish I had better news on that. <laughs> I would love to have three batteries charging too. So hey, this company needs to freaking get going and make them for the Olympus. <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> right. So Done. before we jump into photo share, I want to yeah. throw something out there that is 180 degrees away <laughs> from photography, yeah. just to put a feeler out there. Mm -hmm. So Mike and I, Mike started it. So. I can tell my wife that it's your fault that she can't figure out how oh. to turn on the damn lights in the house anymore. So here's the it deal. Lou people's fault that I did it. Okay, and we're going to blame it on Lou. So ultimately <laughs> this goes back to Lou. You're off right. the hook, Mike. So what uh -huh. happened is uh, I've been, I've been invested thinking about this for a while and then Mike pulled the trigger on it. And then I'm like, all right, I'm going to do it too. So what we're talking about here is basically transitioning over to a quote unquote smart home. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Mike and I, Mike, I don't, I don't know how involved 
what all Mike has. I think he's got definitely a bit more stuff going on than I do. Cause Seven, I, am, I have 17, 17 hue bulbs hooked up and dude. I have five, five rooms. Okay. Never mind. It's, yeah. yeah. Completely. So I've got, yeah, but you're, you're going into a whole nother method coming up yeah. here. <laughs> well, okay. So, so I'm at like six hue bulbs to yeah. be in order this week. And so I'll be at eight, um, two echo dots and mm -hmm. a TP link light switch. So all of these things, can be controlled from my phone or well my door's closed so it probably won't hear me or i could just say alexa turn on the bathroom light mm -hmm. alexa dim the right. bathroom light by 50 percent. whatever you know what whatever you want to do yep the only reason i'm bringing this up because mike and i love to talk obviously <laughs> me maybe more than anybody i just can't ever shut up but um we're considering the thought that we're kicking it around here would anybody watch or be interested in just another side show i'm not sure the frequency of it where we discuss mm -hmm home smart homing making your home yeah, smart, smart homing smart home <laughs> mirrorless homing i don't know what the heck i'm calling it yeah you know it's uh, like no mirrors involved <laughs> definitely not definitely not but uh we're both yeah. interested in it and yeah. um, there's so many different products mike's got like motion sensors and and right. i'm looking at like some third party stuff that lets me hook up like a hundred foot led strip and be able to control it by voice you know we're just looking at all these different things and just kind of curious if some of the people, not necessarily everybody that watches this, but some right. of the people might be curious about doing the smart home thing. And if so, just throw us a comment. Let us know through yeah, one of the many ways you can get hold of us. And, mm -hmm. and I, th I think I think we're thinking about doing a little show. So you never you never know. It could be a, a new show on the uh, Mirrorless Minutes Network. Network. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> MMN. Yeah, there we go. Holy cow. <laughs> We're just starting to get some little things beeping across the bottom. Well, you so, wish you a little rolling. That's bottom. that. I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, I suppose we should share some photos. I mean, we this should. is supposed to be like a photography type show. I'll let you go first. There. All right. All right. I'll 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 get there. Let's see. There we go. All right, we'll we'll start with this crazy one of people in their underwear. Man, where was I at during that party, Mike? <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. All right, so last weekend was my first weekend on my project that we've talked about maybe a couple of times on the show called Chicago Squared. And sure enough, uh, in Chicago that weekend, it was the Undie Run, um, which was awesome, right in Wrigleyville, right by you know the Cubs Stadium. In fact, the Cubs Stadium is right here. I just noticed this girl here is wearing a GoPro too. <laughs> I didn't even realize that. But uh, when these people took off, they really had no plan. They didn't shut down the roads, but hundreds of people came out of this bar crawl, all these bars here. Uh, all morning they have been drinking, as you can sort of tell. And, uh, and they just started running about a mile and a half. And uh, so I just laid, my, you know, I just was very happy to see that because I said, this is fantastic for the project. And uh, put everything, of course, in square. It's shot in square. And just laid myself down in the street as for a lot of these like this just to get these people going crazy past this so that's uh that's one of the ones i like this is a, a second one here that was pretty cool um but i've i've got uh i've used pro capture which was so sharp on with the m1 mark ii because i was able to stay on the people that i hit first for focus and uh which was really sharp in my mind I, I thought that was great and said it wasn't you know searching everywhere uh which was a lot of fun so yeah that uh the uh chicago squared is a whole different project it was very cold that day these people don't look like they think they're cold it was uh oh i don't know maybe 29 or so maybe it wasn't that cold but you know depending on where you are in, in your country or in the united states that's cold and uh let's see before that week before that this is over in detroit this is our renaissance center and i and i, I put this on there for two reasons one I, I love when roads you know are wet like this and the reflection in that that you get from it um every one of these shots that i'm going to share today all with the em1 mark ii all with the new 12 to 100 because as you can tell jamie and i finally got that a couple of weeks ago so i've been going crazy with it um but uh the main reason I put this out, this is called the Renaissance Center. And I wanted to talk real quickly about what I'm doing this weekend. And I, I suggest everybody do this if you're a photographer when you can, is I'm volunteering my time to the American Lung Association on Sunday. And um, in the summer, they have like a run, which is through the Detroit Zoo. But in the, in the wintertime here, as you can tell, this is 72 floors to the top. 
they're having a run up the stairs. It's called Run for Your Life uh, for the American Lung Association. And myself, Lou Peoples, one of the guys that we're accusing of the Hue bulb system, um, we're going to be up here at the very, very top getting the people after they've run up the stairs. And it's and it's and anybody can do it. Uh, it's collecting money, of course, for the American Lung Association. But what's really sharp is the Detroit firefighters have a contest with their full gear on and they run up all 72 flights so we're we're able to get pictures of them uh throughout the run up at different you know different uh sections of the stairs but most of the time we'll be right up top here as they get to the the finish line so it's gonna be an exciting time but 72 floors um lou and i are not doing the 72 floors we're gonna take an elevator uh to the top <laughs> and we'll take our pictures from there uh, all right, so I was in Chicago last week, and not every picture was square. You know, sorry, I, I got too excited on some of the stuff that I found. But this is the Wrigley Building, and and I, you know, of course, I'm not going to go to Chicago and not do some kind of live composite. Went nowhere near the Chicago Theater. I think I have enough of those. But uh, the Wrigley Building uh, over the bridge over uh, on Michigan Avenue uh, was a great clear night. Um, fantastic. And I just love when, of course, when buses come by and when you can get low enough, you get this, this streak where it looks like they're all going into one area, almost like a, a spaceship type thing. So that's one of the ones with the, the Wrigley building. And then last weekend, I happened to be in Las Vegas when it was 67, I believe, here on Saturday. I was in Las Vegas and it was 55 degrees and rained a half an inch of rain. So I flew from 67 and sunny in Detroit to 55 and rain in Vegas. But this is out the window. Uh, obviously, we were in the other part of the wind, which is called the Encore. Um, but I love the structure and the architecture of this building. It's just so sharp. And it was one of the times that wasn't absolutely pouring, but you can tell the cloud cover was pretty darn heavy. So yeah, so that's that's uh, that's some uh, pictures there, and I so yeah, I want to throw in that thing about the American Lung Association. I forgot yeah, to say definitely. that. No, that's cool. No, yeah, and uh, I don't blame you for the elevator. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm going up the elevator. I'm not doing 72 flights of stairs. <laughs> All right, let me see here. I'm gonna pull up some pictures. Okay, here we go. All right, so this is something I don't do very often, Frank. High res mode, uh, bracketed high res mode though. So this is three 80 megapixel photos, uh, each with an exposure value separation of two EV. Um, and to give you an idea, this EM1 Mark II 12 to 100, which is like my new go to lens because it can make anybody a lazy photographer, I guess. You just put the one lens on and you're kind of covered. So the reason I wanted to share this photo is because when I first put this together, you know, and, um, and did the HDR, did the, the blending and was looking at it and I was like, man, I don't, I don't remember it snowing. And then, uh, you zoom in, it's bird poop. So <laughs> there's so much detail in this shot that, uh, this is a hundred percent right here. This isn't like a 200% crop or anything like that. This is 100% uh, from an 80 megapixel high res mode shot. So I'm kind of understanding why Frank says you guys should do this more often because, wow, there's so much freaking detail in these photos. It just blows my mind. Um, and uh, it's super easy to do. Um, yeah, so this is Grand Haven. I spend a lot of time there. It's on the west side of the state. There's This was obviously a few weeks ago before the, the big warm-up we've had. And I'm pretty sure there's no ice there now at this point in time. This was just taken on a day where uh, nobody wanted to shoot. I couldn't find anybody that wanted to hang out and shoot. And I said, all right, screw it. I told my wife, I said, I'm going for a ride. Where are you going? I said, I don't know. I think I'm just going to drive. So I just headed to the west side of the state and spent about five or six hours just driving around the west side of the state shooting for myself, which is kind of fun. You got to do that every once in a while. Um, the next shot was last weekend. I decided to go out. It's funny. I said to my wife, I sat down, I think it was Saturday night. And I said, man, it is so clear outside. I should, 
maybe I should go do a star trail shot. And I was almost ready to just call it a night. And she said, so why are you sitting down? I said, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm going. So I just jumped up and, uh, I wasn't sure where to go. And before I left, I said to my wife, I said, man, I wish I could think of a spot where I could get a highway in the shot that's on an overpass. That's not very, very heavily trafficked. You know, that there's, there's not a lot of action on a lot of cars. And I told her, I said, I can remember one near where you used to live when we were dating and she knew exactly the road. And I'll anybody in Michigan near Jackson, Henry road, where it goes over 127 is the perfect spot to do a long exposure at night. I was there for 40 minutes and one car went by. This is obviously not that. So leaving Henry road, I thought, you know, the long exposure of the highway was kind of cool. And basically it was this shot with a highway with cars going back and forth. And I thought, man, I want something a little more interesting than just white on one side, white streaks, and then red streaks on the other from the highway. So uh, crossing Henry road, coming back towards home, there's a set of railroad tracks, no homes around. And weirdly enough, there's a traffic light or not a traffic light, but like a street light hanging over the road where this uh, railroad crossing is at because there's not like an automatic crossing guard warning kind of thing. So there's a light there. And I thought, man, you know what? These tracks are headed due north and I could probably do uh, a live composite shot there. So I set up and I did a live composite. I ran a uh, 15 minute live composite. And I thought it's missing something. So being, you know, the guy who likes to jump in front of the camera every once in a while and do these kinds of things, I literally set up another live composite and went out there and stood for 15 seconds, I think is about what it was. And I had a lot of questions from a few people on Facebook. How did you, the people that didn't quite understand how live composite works, they thought that because I had it set at 10 and 10 second intervals for what was this like 20 minutes or something like that. Um, they thought that I had to stand there for 20 minutes without moving 10 seconds at a time, or I don't know, they had a lot of really weird questions about it. And basically the way it worked is I just had to stand out there for, I think I stood out there for like 15 seconds and I barely showed up in the shot. So I had to do a little bit of lightning where I was at for me to show up well. And I had somebody ask me how I knew where to shine the flashlight. Well, I'm a nerd, so I know where Polaris is at. So basically that's this dot right here in the dead center, that's the North Star. That's where you want your camera pointed so that you can get these concentric circles. If you're not pointed at that, you don't get round circles. You get them where they're kind of flopping off, you know, to the sides or what have you. So that was a fun live composite. It's something I've been wanting to do for a while and actually pulled it off. Uh, and this is with the EM1 Mark II and the 7 to 14. The next shot is not with an Olympus camera. And this is what I was talking about earlier. Finding... Uh, Interesting images looking straight down from your drone. So this is shot with the Phantom 3 Advanced. Uh, and it's shot from probably 150 feet up. Not very high, considering, you know, that you can fly these things to ridiculous heights. But it just kind of um, it solidified in me what I've been thinking I want to try doing more of. And that is finding interesting features on the ground and just pointing the camera straight down and shooting them. So this was just kind of like a test shot for me. Um, and this is Birchfield Park in Lansing or just south of Lansing. And I think that this pond is actually on some private property next to the park, but uh, I wasn't trespassing. I was just over their, their property. <laughs> the next shot, one of the benefits of my career change is that I go into work uh, at eight o'clock. I'd start work at eight and not 6 a.m. So I'm up and traveling during the sunrise period right now. And it, I just happen to have a couple of gorgeous sunrises this week. So when you're driving and you're not sure what to put in your foreground, you just put whatever could be interesting. So I looked for whatever I could find on my commute. And there's this big, huge row, obviously here of uh, high tension power lines. And I don't know, I just liked how they look like they're marching off to the sunrise. So I, I actually made them part of my shot. Normally, I hate power lines and I will Photoshop out a power line in a heartbeat. But I just made them part of the scene in this shot. And this is straight out of the camera. There's no editing here. This was just my sunrise. Um, yeah, good day. This one was yesterday morning. And you can see this really dark uh, look kind of has almost like a triangular halo kind of going on here. I'm shooting through a chain link fence. I just 
was again driving to work and uh, I had to shoot. And the only way I could shoot was if I pulled over on the side of the road really quick and ran up and jammed my lens up against uh, the fence to try to shoot through it. So I actually shot a couple of shots and recomposed for this shot so that I did get the chain link fence to darken the way that it did so that it just kind of gave me this vignette that kind of the sun nestles into. Um, and I shot this in pop art but i did apply a filter in lightroom and this is the mark ii em1 mark ii with the 12 to 100 at 100 millimeters as is this one right here em1 mark ii at 100 millimeters so yeah that's all i got right there haven't been super active but man i've been loving that 12 to 100 i shoot with it a lot yeah no kidding i'll tell you that one that light tower one or you know the lights the uh, electrical lines wow that, that, that's a good shot <laughs> That that's that's really you know what I at first I thought you took that with a pen F in oh, the yeah. color profile Colors, three. No, I'm telling you, it was a, a vivid went, morning. Wow. Yeah, vivid that morning. was crazy. And it looked they look like transformers, you know, marching yeah. off is what they <laughs> the invasion has begun. So what they did. But yeah. uh yeah, great shot. Boy, man, that's that is cool. Those are good. That's nice to see because now I'm still going in early. It it, it begs to say you get to see that, huh? It's, it's uh, nice. I'm loving it, definitely. Mm -hmm. So I got a question. Did you notice that the one girl in your first shot of the undie run? I love it. She's no, her feet are not on the ground at all. It's like she's oh, like, Oh, yeah, that's the why it was so it. cool. It's like boop, well, she's just that's awesome. And I would love to say that's because it was a great photographer that figured that out, but you know what that is? That's pro capture. It's pro capture. The decisive moment <laughs> I, is now whatever yeah, you want I'm, it to be. In fact, I'm just looking at it by myself, and that was exactly why I picked that one. That's awesome. Yeah, I love because it. <laughs> Just, you know, it's like she's just run in the air. Um, so cool. God, I love pro capture. I mean, yeah. it, especially when you're outdoors like this, I can only imagine yeah. uh, what it's going to be like to shoot, you know, a good football game that's during the day. Yeah. Um, you could really get some sharp stuff, I think. Or, well, I mean, obviously we're seeing it with birds. Yes. I mean, Holy smokes. I'm so it, pumped for bird season this year. Oh my gosh. It's like the, yeah. It's like the craziness of birds. Like the camera is for birds and then, Oh yes. yeah, by the way, it'll take other pictures too. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's <laughs> how it looks right now so you know, far. But. Yeah. I know. I know. I well, we've had a long show, man. It has, been. it has definitely been a long show, almost an hour. Holy smokes. Yeah. And we still got a, a good chunk of viewers watching live. I apologize. To everybody yeah, sorry. There, or thank you very much. We thank you at the same time. Yeah. Uh, so the next show, uh, man. So it'll be March 7th? 7th, yeah. Is yeah, that what you're I, saying? Okay. Yep. I'm hoping that uh, Tuesday night's not bad for everybody. It'll be great. Hopefully, Ann Day can still make a Tuesday and not a Wednesday. Yeah. If not, then we apologize for lying to you. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll put her on the next one. We'll get her. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So hey, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And uh, Mike, you and I need to get together and go flying. We're yeah, going to mark together with us, too, and it'll be and get <laughs> – does sure. Luke, who else has a drone that you know? No, but it, he's going to get one now. <laughs> oh, boy. It's going to be like an armada of drones. He's mad. Yeah, he's mad at me for getting one. <laughs> so – Paybacks for the lights, Lou. Right, exactly. All right. Well, All thanks right. everybody for watching, and uh, we'll see you guys around. Take it easy.